Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how to get over something that may be devastating and now you want to figure out how to get back to your life? That's what we'll talk about today. They always say time changes things, but you actually have to change them yourself. Andy Warhol. Today, we're going to talk about how to get over a traumatic event in your life, something that causes you grief, something that causes you to feel loss or mourning. We'll talk about different ways to feel about these events. It could be anything from losing a friendship, changing a job, moving away from a place you always loved, even graduating from school, or just losing something that you really loved in your life. We experience grief over these events. And we have to acknowledge that our responses to these things are natural, even if sometimes we feel it's overdone or we feel that it's not necessary to feel that way. And part of this comes in when I listen to some other podcasts talking about people in large cities who lost a number of friends who moved out of the cities. And now they're looking at getting back with their lives, but their friends are gone or maybe their job is gone. Something that they really looked forward to seeing again when this was over now is not such an option for them. First of all, understand that even though loss is something that is an emotional response, it has physical symptoms. People feel bodily changes in them when it comes to loss. Such things as like their heart palpitations. They might have stomach problems, headaches. They may struggle to sleep or to eat, or maybe they eat too much. And sometimes it's feeling a physical heaviness or an emotional heaviness where you just don't feel like doing something. And then for emotional symptoms, you can feel a lot of different things like bitterness and anger, apathy, confusion, and and sometimes just a general lack of joy. And then it's even worse if there's other emotions wrapped into whatever happened to you, like guilt or shame or feeling betrayed or feeling like you did something wrong, it depends on the thing. If it's a loss of a relationship, there's other emotions that are built in there too. So it's hard to peg these things down when so many different feelings are being felt and so many physical reactions are happening. And just to understand that if some of these things go on for a really long time, it's time to seek someone who can help you. But this podcast is really going to talk about something that's not quite that long lasting to see if you can pull yourself out of what you're feeling. So if you do feel like you need to get help, get help. But if you feel like maybe some advice would help you, keep on listening. I think what's hard with some of these things, including this pandemic, is sometimes there's no ritual. There's no ending point to this. For example, if you lose your job, usually there's an end to it, right? You get the box, you walk out with your box. It's always that box. Why is it always that box? But there's a a ritual to it. Or even if a relationship is ending, there are sometimes some rituals involved with that. I've seen friends burn photograph of exes, cut them out of pictures, or hand back all the things that was there. That seems like just an activity, but in some ways, it's almost a ritual of how that thing ends, whatever it is. And one of the things with the pandemic, just in general, is there is no ritual for it. So I think it's important that if you don't have one, make one up. My friend and I, we went to a restaurant to celebrate the end of the pandemic. We hadn't been in a restaurant since February of last year. Going to a restaurant felt like a victory. It felt like a ritual that we reclaimed in our lives. And it felt good to do it. I was a little out of practice. I even brought my own drink into the restaurant, totally forgetting that they have their own drinks there. Who knows what's going to happen? Make sure that if you can figure out a way to celebrate make a party, cut something into ribbons, whatever it is, have a ritual that you can deem as the end of this thing. Then I think you have to face whatever it is that happened. You have to look it in the eye. And once you've done that, you have to take it slowly. Digest this information over time. Someone said the difference between poison and a drug is quantity. If you take a particular type of drug too much or too quickly, it'll poison your system. And I think that's what sometimes facing the truth is, too. Sometimes when you had a loss and you think about all the things that are changing in your life and all the different things that have happened, even when it comes to the pandemic, like I said, jobs may be changed, friends may be changed, kids were going to have their last year of high school and now suddenly they're instantaneously in college without that last year. People gave up a lot. 
We're not even talking about the devastating things of it. We're even just talking about the personal things with it. Whatever it is that happened, tell yourself the truth, but take it very slowly. Ingest it very slowly so it doesn't overwhelm you. But it is important to face the fact that some things did, in fact, change. And when you are feeling overwhelmed and you are feeling like it's getting the best of you, take a nap. Find some other quiet, joyful way to just refresh yourself so you're feeling better about whatever it is that happened. Sometimes it's just a matter of saying you feel weird. I had some struggles in January where I was burned out. I was burned out at work. I was burned out in my life. I don't know what really happened. And I felt horrible. And in talking to a friend, I said, I don't feel like I deserve to feel horrible because in reality, nothing bad happened. I I didn't lose anyone. Most of my group stayed healthy. I got to work from home. My company was great about it. My friend wisely said, you have to let yourself feel those feelings, even if you don't feel like you deserve to feel those feelings. It felt really weird to sit there and say, I'm sad. I feel like I missed something last year and I'm really burned out. And she said, you just have to go with it and allow yourself to work through those things. If you feel bad, it's okay to feel bad, even if you don't feel like you deserve to feel bad. And that was such great advice. So it's okay to say to other people like I did that it feels sad or it feels weird or I don't really know what to feel. That's okay to say those things too. It's really important that you just say whatever's honestly there. If you just say, I feel really terrible. I don't even know what I'm feeling. I don't really know what I'm thinking, but I don't feel great right now. Your friends can help you get into a better place, even if you don't know what to do about that. And so one thing that's really important is that you keep doing things for your health. It's really easy when you get overwhelmed with something that's robbing your brain of attention and emotion to forget to eat right, to forget to exercise, to get enough sleep. But all of those things are so important. If you're not getting enough sleep, everything feels worse because your diet's terrible or you're not exercising. It can make you feel that your brain is much worse than it actually is. Feeling good in your body, even when you're feeling sad emotionally, will help you not go into a downward spin. It'll help take you back. And exercise can really help your emotions. I know everyone says that. Oh, if you feel terrible, if you feel angry, go exercise. But it is so true. There have been many times in the past where I did not feel great emotionally. I was mad or sad. And just working out drained the edge of my emotions. The problem was still there. I still had whatever situation was going on, but it really helped me feel better. I highly advise that you do those healthy things so that you do feel better and at least you don't feel awful. Avoid those bad habits. I know that it's very standard where people will get upset and they'll drink or they'll take drugs or they'll do something that has been a destructive habit for themselves. Maybe they played too much video games in the past and suddenly they're doing it again. Whatever it is, you have to avoid those bad habits that suck you in. Getting away from your problems for a short time is good to do. But when you have a bad habit that drags you down, it will take a toll on you as you get wrapped back up into it. At the beginning of the pandemic, I noticed that there were quite a few people who used to be overweight and out of shape and not living a very healthy life. And what they were afraid of is that they would fall back into those habits again, sitting on the couch, watching TV endlessly, playing video games endlessly, put back the weight that they had lost, undo the health benefits they had gained. And they became frightened of becoming a person they used to be. So some of them bought a Peloton. I started doing FaceTime training sessions with my trainer, Heather, so I would feel like I was keeping up with the things that I had already started. No one to distract yourself. No when you have been in a slump for too long, when you feel like you're not making any headway with your emotions. Sometimes you just need a distraction. Maybe you do need to rent a movie. Maybe you do need to take on a new habit or a new hobby. Try to remember that at a time of loss, doing something new is a great start. It can really make the difference. It could even be something like joining a club, a hiking club, a meetup group, a running group, maybe hiring a coach, volunteering for something, or again, counseling or hotline. But know when you need to do something else to get yourself out there, to get yourself doing something else. And that means also connecting again. 
If you feel like you were separated from people, if you lost a relationship, maybe a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and suddenly the whole friends thing is weird and complicated, connect again anyway. Call your mom, talk to your friends, talk to your coworkers, get time to be with other people. I know a lot of times with introverts, they like to be quiet when there are times of emotional strain. And it may be time, though, to connect with someone to help them give you perspective, give you good ideas, or just listen and let you cry on their shoulder. Maybe that's all it takes. And another important thing is to forgive. It's hard to forgive someone, particularly if something went really horribly wrong in your relationship, or maybe they decided to move to the other side of the country. Forgiveness is the best thing that you can really give yourself. It's great for the other person if you forgive them, but it is more important to forgive for your own self. When you have anger, it doesn't hurt the other person as much as it hurts you. It's a poison you make and then drink yourself. Avoid major decisions. You've always heard about rebound relationships and rebound decisions where you decide to move to the other side of the country and change your life and do something. It's not really a time to do a major decision. When you're emotionally upset, you're feeling physically unwell, and the strain is really taking its toll, the wrong decision could be made in those times. For example, if you got over a major relationship, maybe your job isn't going as well as you thought it was going to do, and the first thought in your head is, I'm going to move to the other side of the country. I'm going to get away from everyone and everything I know. And a lot of times that does not fix anything. You're still you, you still have those same emotions, and people think it will be miraculous to just get away from it all, to leave every situation behind. But unfortunately, it's not as great as you think it will be. You can also look towards your culture, your faith, as ways of helping you through mourning. A lot of different churches have help for people who are going through a loss. There's counseling that's inside the church, the temple, the mosque. There's people that you can talk to who can give you a perspective about what's going on. And as you're going through these things, just remember, there's no deadline when it comes to getting over this. Sometimes it takes a few days. Sometimes it takes a few weeks. For me, when I had my burnout, I slept a little bit more. I took a little bit more time for myself. I had some projects I was working on in the house, and I dropped them for a while just to give myself a little bit of a break. And that, in the end, helped me a great deal. It just needed a few weeks of rest, enjoyable things to get over that. But some losses are big, and they're going to take a long time. But you know you will get over this. You know you're going to. Whatever it is that's coming for you, you know that there's going to be a time when this feels better. Just remember that it's a process. Some things that you don't want to do while you're feeling this loss or mourning or grief in your life is first of all, you don't want to focus only on it. You don't want to drive yourself into a hole thinking about this day and night. Small steps of loss, facing it, thinking about it, but there has to be some other sprinkled things in that can give you a break, rest you a little bit, give you the strength that you're going to need in order to fight this fight again tomorrow. Also, denial is a terrible thing to do. Don't deny that this happened. Don't deny that you feel sad. Don't feel like this is all of life, that your life lacks purpose or meaning. You have the same purpose and the same meaning you had yesterday. Even in the case where you had a significant other that maybe you lost or a job that you loved a great deal and it's gone and you felt that had a lot of meaning and purpose for you. Just because that's gone doesn't mean that your meaning is gone. Don't isolate yourself, but bring other people in. Make sure you connect with people. It's easy to get irritable, angry, and agitated when you're feeling loss of that. Do not take that out on yourself and don't take that out on other people. I know that sometimes it's easy to get into fights when you're not feeling great, but just remember the people in your life are there to help you. And so make sure that you give them the space and the grace in order to do that. Summary. Make sure that you understand that there is no one way people feel loss, mourning, or grief. Two, understand some of the symptoms of it. Everything from feeling unwell in your body to feeling emotionally unwell. 
And that can take the face of anger or bitterness or apathy. Understand the emotions that are involved for you when you are feeling grief. Three, understand there's no timetable. There's no structure for when you have to be over this. It can last days, weeks, months. Depends on what it is. And it depends on how tough you're feeling at that particular moment. Sometimes when something bad happens to us and we've been in a great mood, we get over it quickly. Sometimes when we're not, it takes a little bit longer. Four, make sure that you find a ritual so that you can mark the end of whatever it is in this loss. If it's the end of a job or a relationship or a pandemic, make sure that you have a ritual to end it. And then take a nap, relax yourself, connect with other people, try new hobbies, habits, and events. Get together and connect with other people in your life or meet new people. And make sure that you forgive the people around you for what went wrong. Five, make sure that you keep yourself healthy by avoiding bad habits and things that have been addictions for you in the past, whether it's drinking or video games, keep yourself away from the bad things. Adopt healthy habits. Make sure you're getting enough sleep, enough exercise, and that you're eating right. Even if you didn't do it before this event happened, start doing it now. Six, look to your faith. Look to the faith of people around you, even if you don't have a faith, to get some counseling, to help you walk through the process of grief, and to give you an outside perspective. Know when you need professional counseling, whether it's someone inside of a faith or a regular counselor, coach, or psychologist, or psychiatrist. Challenge. Write a list of 10 things that you do when you are feeling loss or grief. Identify what you do when you're going through those things so that you will be able to recognize it better when it happens again. And today's advice comes from Steel Magnolias. I I just want to hit somebody until they feel as bad as I do. I just want to hit something. I want to hit it hard. Here, hit this. Go ahead, Malin. Slopper. Are you crazy? Hedda. Are you high, Clary? Clary, have you lost your mind? We'll sell t-shirts saying I slapped Weezer Boudreau. Hedda. Miss Clary, enough. Weezer, this is your chance to do something for your fellow man. Oh. Knock her lights out, Malin. Let go of me. Malin, you just missed a chance of a lifetime. Half a chickapin parish should give the eye teeth to take a whack of Weezer. but what did they learn laughter laughter can be the best medicine and maybe sometimes hitting your best friend but mostly just laughter okay everyone have a great week you can email me at jill at smallstepspod.com or visit my website let me know what you think If you have anything that you wish for me to talk about or you have any comments about the podcast, just let me know. 